Roswell Media Sports. And welcome in to Kosciuszko Whippets Baseball from Boswell Media Sports. It's playoffs here from the Itala County Fairgrounds. Breck Riley with you. And we got Donald back in the studios there on Golf Course Road for uh, a night of playoff baseball. The Kosciuszko Whippets hosting the Panthers of Amory High School. Uh, also off to our right, the softball team doing the exact same. We'll give you updates on that. But as it is, this is our premier medical pregame show and uh, we appreciate you for tuning in there are a number of ways you can follow along with the broadcast we are on your radio dial on breezy 101 uh, also that's if you're in the you know the central mississippi area or if you're driving somewhere outside of the coverage area, you can listen in on the Breezy 101 app. Uh, also, there's a listen live feed at breezynews.com. And we do have the video broadcast available to you uh, online at breezynews.com as well as the Boswell Media YouTube channel. So if you uh, go to your iPad, smartphone, smart TV, uh, and just search uh, Boswell Media, you will find our Stream and you can join us for a night of baseball. Those uh, online audio and video streams are presented by Frank Chevrolet. Uh, taking a look at our field conditions and our weather report. That's very, very important. That's brought to you by the Italian County Co-op. Field looks good considering the monsoon that we had here uh, last night. The, the boys and coaches have been working since about noon this uh, morning. When I was out here, about 1230, uh, they were uh, you know getting the, the field ready. Still some still some spots around the corners and deep in the hole at second and third. You can tell there was water, but for the most part, it looks, uh, looks pretty good considering and uh, looking at your weather uh, you, you wouldn't think it but there is actually no rain in the forecast now you might have a, a, a mist if you will maybe a couple of droplets here or there but nothing that I think is going to impact the ball game where we would run into a weather delay scenario you're looking at uh, clear skies through this evening uh, right now we're looking at uh, highs in or, or currently a temperature of 77 and humid it is humid out Side. The wind uh, is coming in from the northwest at 6 miles an hour, uh, gusting up to about 15. Those uh, will field conditions. Weather report brought to you by the Itala County Co-op. Now we will give you the starting lineups brought to you by Holmes Community College. First up, we'll take a look at the visitors from Amory. You got junior Jack Howell leading things off playing left field. It's Braden Maranto. Whippet fans will remember that name. He played quarterback for the Amory Panther football team. He bats second place shortstop. Doe McCowan will bat third and played first base with Jathan Ray batting fourth, playing left field. Ace Rock will be on the mound, batting uh, fifth. It's Paxton Wright batting sixth, uh, playing third base. Your designated hitter will be Ethan Childers. Kai Dozier will bat eighth, play second base, and it is Ben Galt who bats ninth and plays right field. And playing in the field but not in the batting order, the catcher Sawyer Almond, so Howell, Maranto, McGowan, Ray, Rock, Wright, Childers, Dozier, Galt, and Almond. And now your starting lineups brought to you by Holmes Community College. You can see them there on your screen. Leading things off will be the senior, Andrew Mansell. He'll play left field. It's Barrett Kewen behind home plate, the, the junior. And then Benny Powell will bat third, play center field. It's John Wyatt Rusco who will bat Fourth and play right field. Braxton Smith, the sophomore, he's on the bump tonight for the Whippets. Uh, junior Bailey Powers is playing first base. You got Ryan Tillman, a junior, playing shortstop. Aiden Howard, sophomore, at third base, and Holden McGee, another sophomore, over at second base. So Mansell, Q, and Powell, Rusco, Smith, Powers, Tillman, Howard, and McGee. Those starting lineups brought to you by. Holmes Community College taking a look at this Amory squad. I have them at eight and twelve. Now, I'm not sure that's you know exactly correct. It's uh, some of the uh, places online have found three or four records for them, so records kind of incom incomplete. That was an average. So eight and twelve, three and five out of Region One Four A. They're coached by Chris Pace. They're the number four seed out of Region One Four A. Uh, that is uh, the region. Up in northeast Mississippi, uh, that has uh, teams like Ripley, uh, also Tishomingo County, Itawamba AHS. So those are the, uh, let's see, Ripley won that division. 
And then in second place was Itawamba. In third place was Tishomingo County. And in fourth place is this Amory Panther team. And if you know anything about Amory, uh, they won the 3A state championship two years in a row. You heard Coach McBride and I talk about that this week in the Surf Pro Coaches Show. This is a team that won back-to-back. -back. They won it in 2022, and they won it in 2023. Now, that was the 3A state championship. They've jumped up to 4A. But, you know, baseball is baseball, regardless of you know, classification, especially from 3 to 4A. If you jumped from 1A to 6A, you might a little bit of a drop-off. But 3A to 4A going to be very competitive. There. And so this is a team that knows how to win. Just two returning starters from uh, last year's team that won the 3A state championship. And those are the two leadoff batters. That'll be Jack Howell and Braden Maranto. But it's a, it's a team that really knows uh, how to win. As I said, it's a, a winning tradition up there at Amory. And, of course, they've kind of had some uh, issues with the tornado that came through uh, last year. The, the big story about them going on the road uh, after that tornado in late March and then uh, winning the state championship. So they faced adversity. If there's any adversity to be overcome, the same Marie Panther team has done it. So Whippets um, in for a dog fight this evening as the starters are being called out. We'll put them back up on the screen for you there. If you're watching that Frank Chevy Video stream at the Boswell Media YouTube channel. Over to our right, Kosciuszko Whippets softball. That game's on Cruising 98.3. Uh, also on the Boswell Media Sports YouTube channel. They don't start till 6.30, so you get some baseball, and then we'll get softball over there. We'll give you updates as that goes on. But right now, we're going to step aside for our prayer and our national anthem. We'll be back after this with more Whippets baseball from Boswell Media Sports. The beauty of spring starts at the Atala County Co-op. From your lawn to your flower beds, the Atala County Co-op will make it stand out against the rest with fountain, outdoor furniture, plants, and yard art. It's t-shirt weather, and the Atala County Co-op has a large selection of Old Row, Southern Point, and Strut and Cotton t-shirts, and new spring apparel from Ariat and Carhartt. For the perfect drinking experience, grab a brewmate before you head out to the baseball or softball field. The Itala County Co-op, Highway 12 East in Kosciuszko. Flu shots are now available at all Premier Medical Group locations for infants six months through adults. Come in today and get your flu shot. Just walk in and they will see you shortly. Flu shots are now available ages six months and up. Premier Medical Group in Kosciuszko, Carthage, and Holmes Community College in Goodman, and Trace Urgent Care. Premier Medical Group, PMG, good health is our priority. Boswell Media Sports. And we are back here with Kosciuszko Whippets Baseball, catching the end of the National Anthem. Always fun when you can uh, kind of hang the microphone out the window and uh, catch the end of, uh, of that. Well, we are ready for baseball. The Whippets going with Braxton Smith on the mound as they get ready to take on the Amory Panthers. Our first pitch is going to be brought to you by Central Electric Power Association. Going to be close to that 6 o'clock start time, I imagine. Might be a little bit afterwards. They're going to give Braxton Smith a little bit of time to do some warm-up tosses. Let's see. Braxton Smith on the season 34 and a thirds innings pitched. 34 strikeouts, 22 walks, 3.26 earned run average, 26 runs given up, just 16 earned runs. He did pitch uh, about 20 pitches earlier this week. The Whippets went on the road to take on Madison Central. Sort of a, a return game from earlier in the season. We had game one for you here Back in, I think, late February where the Jaguars and the Whippets played a, a close game. I think it ended up being 11-8, uh, 11-7, something like that. Uh, this was a, the return game. As I said, Braxton Smith 
got a couple of innings in, or should got a few pitches in there. You know, just kind of keep the arm loose. But uh, Whippets uh, keeping that same rotation. We expect Smith tonight. Uh, and if uh, they have to get some relief, probably go to the sophomore Aiden Howard. And then you got Bailey Powers, uh, the left-hander, probably on the mound tomorrow in game number two. Game number two will be tomorrow at 2 o'clock, and we're going to be on the road at Itawamba Community College. That's where uh, Amory has been playing some of their home games. They've kind of been playing a couple of places like Hatley and uh, Hamilton and, and Tupelo and and Itawamba, just kind of wherever is available. As I said, they're kind of uh, displaced from the tornado from last year. So they uh, kind of have to play where they can. But, hey, they last year proved that it didn't matter where this team played as they went on to win that state championship. But here we go. We are going to be a little bit after 6 o'clock for our first pitch. It'll be, let's see, Jack Howell, the left fielder, stepping in. He's a lefty, and he's one of the two returning starters on this Amory squad. Uh, Smith winds and delivers. First pitch a little up and in for ball one. Our first pitch is at 6.02. First pitch brought to you by Central Electric Power Association. And that pitch catches the outside corner for strike. So that'll even up the count at one and one. Uh, took a little something off of it there. Found the inside corner for strike two. One ball and two strikes. First innings for our Whippets playoff baseball brought to you by Pickles Drugstore. Got a wide stance does Howell. That one stays upstairs for ball two. Even and up to count at two balls and two strikes. Two two pitch. It's a little chopper. Tillman charges it. Going to be a hard play to make. Throw is not in time. Infield single. Yeah, that's just one of those that's not really hit hard at all. Tillman did all he could to make it a closer play at first, but Howell legs out the infield single and a runner on first base as Braden Moranto, the junior, will step in. He's a lefty. Not often you see two lefties at the top of the batting order. So Smith will work from the stretch now. Comes right after him for strike one with the fastball. So Moranto will take a look at his play card, stick it in his back pocket. Now he calls for time. He'll step in. Now he steps back out. So now, I guess we're ready to go. Not too big of a lead by Howell at first. Pitch inside corner, strike two. So Smith got an 0-2 count to the lefty Moranto. Set the whip at defense for you. No score, just underway, top of the first inning. And just off the plate, trying to get that outside corner call, and, and Moranto not chasing it. You got Smith on the mound, Baird Kewen behind home plate at the corners from right uh, to left. It is Bailey Powers at first, Aiden Howard at third. There's a chopper to Howard. He'll move to his left, can't make the play, and everybody will be safe. That one moved him over to his left. Now batting number eight, Dow McGowan. So we'll have runners on first and second, and nobody out as McGowan. Doe, Dow, Dow, McGowan. So runners on first and second, nobody out. Amory here. Well, something cooking early in the ball game. But McGowan comes around the bunt. The curveball stays up and in for ball one. One ball, no strikes, the count. Well, Smith taking his time here. 
Powers playing in at first base. There is the bunt. Smith is going to get to it. He airmails it over the first baseman. One run comes home to score. Two runs come home to score. So just like that, Amory has a two to nothing lead and a runner at second base was still nobody out. So coming around to score was Howell and Moranto. And McGowan ends up at second base. Another lefty stepping in, that's Jathan Ray. Look back at second from Smith. He squares around to bunt. And he caught a piece of it for foul ball, strike one. Two to nothing. Amory in the lead here in top of the first inning. Jumped on Kosciuszko. And still yet to record an out. Pass ball low inside. Finish the defensive look for you. Holden McGee's at second base. It's Ryan Tillman at shortstop. Right to left in the outfield. It's Rusco, Powell, and Mansell. So Smith comes set. Another bunt attempt is fouled over towards the Whippets dugout down the third baseline. Makes it one ball, two strikes the count. But a pretty good crowd here. That's a, a number of people off to our right. Going to watch both games. You got the Amory fans that can watch baseball and softball. And obviously, Kosciuszko fans as well as Ray calls for time. Softball not going to start until 6.30. So, the number of the softball fans, I can look over and see they are, they're turned around watching this baseball game. It's always fun when you get the two teams playing. There's a ball hit in the gap at second. McGee gets to it, going to try to throw, get him out at first base, but the runner moves over to third. One out in the inning. Just some slow roller right there. The runner moves over to third base, and the pitcher, Ace Rock, comes to the plate. I got another lefty. A lot of lefties in his lineup. First pitch to Rock is off the plate. Ball one. Yeah, what's the second Friday in a row where uh, Whippets baseball and softball have played the same team? Last weekend, it was Whippets baseball and softball taking on Caledonia. A little hit into left field. Mansell can't get to it, but here comes the throw home. Going to be close, and he is called safe at home. Let's see, that was Dow. Um, uh, excuse me, McGowan coming home. Bang, bang, play. Good throw by Mansell. Good tag by Kewen. But as it stands, it is a single. And a run driven in for Rock. And he ends up at second base. I did not see if they brought in a courtesy runner for him. I believe they did, but I was making the notes in my in my list here, so not quite sure what number that is out at second base. See if they updated on the iPad over here. Another ball hit into left field. That's drifting foul. Big break there for the Whippets. So just a long strike. Looks like 26 or 28 is out there as the Courtesy runner don't have a 26, so we're going to assume it's number 28, Sam Black, that came in to run for Ace Rock out at second base. Oh, 
pitch just a little off the plate. Ball one, evening up the count. So three to nothing, Amory. Jumping on Kosciuszko is Peyton Paxton Wright. Squares around to Bunt. And now Smith will step off the mound. Let's see, Paxton Wright with the 1-1 count. Wright is the third baseman. Smith, long look back at second. Curve ball. A little up and in. Ball two. Two balls, one strike. Wind picking up here at the ballpark just a little bit. Pitch is fouled off. I wouldn't think it. Oh, he fouled it off of somebody's foot. I don't know if it was his own foot or... It could have been the home plate. I don't know, but it hit definitely hit some kind of canvas or leather or something. Either way, it's a foul ball. And it'll be a 2-2 count to Paxton Wright. Smith peeks back at second base. Ball's hit to third. It's off of Howard. He's going to stay with it. He'll throw and get the out. Oh, Howard... The second out, and now it's Ethan Childers at the plate. Now batting the DH number five, Ethan Childers. Childers is your designated hitter. Don't have classifications for a lot of these players. The runner had to stay at second base, so still just a runner down at second base, and Childers is a right-handed hitter. Curve ball is going to be hit in the gap. I don't think anyone's going to get to it. They won't. It one hops to the fence. Run comes home. Childers digging for second. He is in there safe. So that is an RBI double. And the Panthers extend their lead four to nothing. Yeah, just a good piece of hitting there. You got to hit it in the right spot to get it between Mansell and Powell because they both have some speed, and that is what Childers was able to do. So it's Dozier that steps in, the second baseman. Fast ball outside, ball one. So, yeah, Dozier, the number eight hitter in the Amory lineup. Another ball hit to the right side. It's deep, it's deep, and Rusko able to track it down and pull it in for out number three. Good play there by Rusko, but the damage is done. Amory gets four runs on two hits, two errors, and one left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the first inning, Amory. It leads it four to nothing. Here's something I bet you don't know. You could go to college for free. Do you have a 20 on your ACT? Yes. Whoa, 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 wait. So my tuition is free? Where? Home CC. Yes, every word you just heard is absolutely true. Goodman, Kosciuszko, Grenada, Ridgeland, Yazoo City, online. Does not matter. Why in the world would Holmes Community College offer free tuition with a 20 on the ACT? Simple. At Holmes, we don't want you drowning in college debt the rest of your life. You know, I have heard students with associate degrees from Holmes often make more money than four-year students with bachelor and master degrees. True. Plus, at Holmes, you get three-day weekends. So there's that. Sweet. So now you know. Your tuition is free with a 20 on your ACT at Holmes CC. No place like Holmes. Holmes Community College. Boswell Media Sports. Bottom of the first inning. Amory puts up a four spot in the top half of the inning. So before the Whippets even get a chance to bat, they're down in the hole four runs. It was Jack Howell, Braden Moranto, uh, Dow McGowan, and then Ace Rock came in to score. Two hits, two errors. 
Whippet's got some work to do, and then we'll all start with the top of the order. Andrew Mansell, Baird Kewitt, and Benny Powell. Mansell, the senior left fielder. And you got Ace Rock on the mound, and I'm not sure there's a more fitting name for a pitcher than Ace Rock. Mansell chops one high to Rock, and he'll throw it across for the first out. One pitch, one out. Right, here we go. Oh, it'll be Baird Kewen to step in. Now back in the kitchen, number seven, Baird Kewen. Yeah, I don't have any stats on Rock or anything like that. I can tell you that he is a junior. That's about all I can tell you about him. So Baird Kewen stepping in. Ball bounces. In the dirt outside, it is Almond who blocks it up. So you got Kewen Powell, Rusco, Braxton Smith, Bailey Powers, Ryan Tillman, Aiden Howard, and then Holden McGee. That's your lineup for the Whippets. Whippets catcher. Fouls one down the third base line. Ace Rock, a right hander. Then he bat left. Did he bat left handed? Yeah, a lot of, it's kind of confusing here with all the lefties they've got in the lineup. They don't have many of them in the field. There's a curve ball that Kewen catches a piece of and slow rolls it down the first baseline. Get Rock on the mound. Almond behind home plate. McGowan at first. Dozier at second. Maranto at shortstop. Right at third base. Left to right in uh, the outfield. It's Ray. Howell and Galt. Well, that's what it looks like for the Amory Panthers. The umpire wanted to take a look at the baseball for some reason. Not sure. Maybe he thought something was some shenanigans were afoot, but apparently everything's okay. And he sends it back to Ace Rock, who rocks into a step, and it's a curve ball that Q and able to catch just a little bit of to stay alive at the plate. A well, one-two count as Ace Rock shakes off a, a sign. And that's a called strike three. Fast ball. And wants to call it the outside corner. So that is the first strike out of the ball game. And it's Benny Powell. Benny Powell, Whippets leader in a number of offensive categories. Like batting average, RBIs, runs scored. I wonder if his brother will be at the game tomorrow if if Itawamba doesn't have a game, which I think they do. That pitch is low. Yeah, going up to Itawamba tomorrow to play game two. Kalen Powell, Benny's older brother, plays for the Indians. But I believe Itawamba has a road game tomorrow. Kalen might not be able to see his younger brother play. Pitch outside, ball two. Four to nothing, aim leads at bottom of the first inning. First innings for Whippets Baseball are brought to you by Pickles Drugstore. 2-0 pitch, and it's called a strike on the outside corner. So two and one to Benny Powell. That pitch way off the plate, ball three. If Powell reaches base, you got John Wyatt Rusco coming to the plate. 3 1. Hard hit ball, but it's foul. Rocketed down the third base line, landed down there by the Whippets locker room. The, you know, what used to be the football locker room. Now it's the baseball locker room. Oh, that makes it a full count to the Whippets center fielder, Benny Powell. Ball is hit to the right side. It's through. Two out single. Rolled past McGowan at first base. Whippets have a base runner. John Wyatt Rusco at the plate. Now batting right fielder number 27, John Wyatt Rusco. And Powell, he's a threat. Lead team's leader in stolen bases. Let's see what they decide to do. Can't necessarily butt Rusco here. 
But you got a lefty stepping in, and it's Ace Rock who will have to pitch from the stretch. That ball's hit hard into left field, but Ray had him shaded just perfectly. The wind played a little trick with it, but Ray's able to adjust and make the catch. And the Whippets are retired. They get no runs on one hit, no errors. There was nobody left on base. Through one complete inning, Amory leads Kosciuszko four to nothing. When an electrical shortage in your office causes extensive smoke and water damage or that musty odor indicates you might have a mold problem, you need a lot more than just help cleaning up. That's why SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands is the authority when disaster strikes. We offer all the cleanup and construction services to take your home or business to good as new and as soon as possible. So no matter what happens, there's just one call you need to make. Call SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands at 662-289-7473 to see how we can help you back to like it never even happened. Franchises are independently owned and operated. When it comes to insurance, one size does not fit all. At Alpha, the Chris Coleman Agency in Kosciuszko, knowing the customer and their individual needs is what we pride ourselves on. We know how important it is for everyone to have the peace of mind that your insurance coverages are tailored for you. Our team recognizes your life and your unique needs. That is why we provide you with numerous insurance options, an easy claim process, and personal attention that is second to none, all at one location without breaking the bank. Call us today at 662-289-1024 or visit us at 235 North Madison Street off the square in Kosciuszko. At Alpha, the Chris Coleman Agency, we guarantee the right fit for you and all of your insurance needs. Boswell Media Sports. Top of the second inning, Kosciuszko trails Amory 4 to nothing. It is... Let's see, Kangaroo Crossing brings you second innings of Whippets Baseball. It'll be the number nine hitter to come to the plate, Ben Galt. And then back to the top of the order. Galt is the right fielder for the Amory Panthers as Braxton Smith winds and delivers, and it's a bunt attempt that runs foul down the third baseline. That's Amory team not afraid to a little small ball. That thing also find the gap. Smith into his wind up. Fast ball, a little, a little up and out. Here's the pitch. It's a little blooper on the right side, and no one's going to get to it. Yeah, that one. Uh, they just we're in no man's land. Powers, McGee, Rusco all run out for it. Uh, but just in that sort of area where it, nobody can uh, track it down. And a couple of hits like that this evening. The, in fact, Jack Howell hit one like that to start the game. He had a little slow roller right to Tillman. And Tillman played it, you know, about as perfectly as he could. It's just it wasn't hit hard enough. And Smith opens it with the curve ball for strike one. Yeah, out at shortstop, Ryan Tillman just had to ask the umpire to kind of move out of the way. Last time Tillman had to charge at when Howell hit one, so Tillman didn't want to have to run into the umpire there, trying to charge a a ground ball. Runner takes off. There's a swing they had the hit and run on, and it gets away from Kewen off to the left side and. It uh, will be a stolen base down to second. Yeah, just a hit and run. And I thought that maybe Howell got a piece of it and fouled it off. But they say, no, just swung and missed. But now you got a runner in scoring position. Wide stance for the left-hander. Smith, long look back at second. Upstairs, fastball. One and two. Sounds like Whippet softball game getting going off to our right. Softball also taking on Amory. So uh, I don't know if there's anyone left in Monroe County. They all just came down to Talent County this weekend. That curveball way out. Kind of got away from Smith there. Good job by Kewen jumping up and pulling that one down. Four to nothing. The Panthers lead Kosciuszko top of the second inning. Uh, look back at second. 
2 2. Looking strike three. That's the first strikeout of the ball game for Braxton Smith. And there's one down in the inning. Those strikeouts brought to you by the Itali County Farm Bureau. So, Braden Maranto steps in. Maranto reached an error and scored back in that big first inning. He said another lefty. He tries to call for time. It's not granted. Fastball outside corner, strike one. Man. Maranto called, uh, I should say he didn't call for time. Uh, a couple of times in his first at bat, he just stepped out. And it didn't look like the umpire granted it. But, I mean, he might have said something and we just you know, didn't motion. But that time the umpire did not grant time. Which, uh, umpire does, he is not obligated to grant time as somebody calls time. I don't know who it was. I guess Maranto, maybe. Yeah, Moran, he, did, he didn't signal for time, but Smith and Hewitt were taking a while there, so he might have just asked for it, but he didn't put his hand up. 0-1 oh, pitch. Up oh, for ball one. Smith a little back at Tillman. Got to be giving out those infield signals on the defense. You got Holden McGee playing back on the grass. At the corners there, about midfield depth. And there's sort of an excuse me swing. As Maranto went around, couldn't lay off that high fastball, and it's strike two. I'll give you a look around the 4A playoffs, what's happening elsewhere in the uh, postseason as we have the bracket to look at throughout the game. Swinging strike three, got him to chase that curveball, and that's back-to-back -back strikeouts for Braxton Smith. Two down in the inning. Strikeouts brought to you by the Italian County Farm Bureau. Dow McGowan will step in. He also reached on an error and scored in the first inning. He tried to tried to do a sacrifice bunt, and then uh, when the whip was trying to throw him out at first, the ball went over. Everybody said so. That's how he's able to come around to score. He hits one foul. That one's landing at Peggy Abel's field. Where they are, it sounds like they're praying. So, hopefully, that one didn't hit anybody that was, <laughs> that was being respectful and had their head down. It sounded like they were doing a prayer over there. Oh, one pitch. It's hit to McGee at second. Takes a high hop, and McGee will... Throw to first for the out, and the leadoff single goes for Knott as the Whippets were able to uh, get three outs after that. No runs, one hit, no error, and one left on base. Through one and a half innings, Amory leads Kosciuszko four to nothing. Hey, I'm James Matters with Farm Bureau Insurance. For the past six years, I've been blessed to serve our community as a local insurance agent. When most people think of insurance, they think of their home and auto, which is the natural thing to do. This year, I'm shifting my focus to what's important, family. Protecting your family with life insurance is the most important insurance decision you will ever make. I'd like the opportunity to sit down with you and your family to discuss your life insurance. Together, we can build a plan that fits your needs and your budget. After all, life insurance is more than a policy. It's a promise. A promise to take care of the ones you love, no matter what. Give me a call, 289-4862. Your pharmacist is more than someone who fills your prescriptions. Your pharmacist helps you understand what medications you're taking. Your pharmacist makes sure your insurance is filed correctly. And your pharmacist answers any other questions you may have regarding your medications. Hi, I'm Rob Pickle, registered pharmacist and owner of Pickle's Drugstore. It is my goal to give you the personal attention you need to improve your health and well-being. My staff and I are here to serve you. Pickle's Drugstore, your hometown pharmacy, on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Bottom of the second inning. It's five, six, and seven due up for the Whippets. That will be Braxton Smith to lead things off. First pitch from Ace Rockets hit into foul territory. Everybody giving chase. It's going to get out of play. Give Almond, Sawyer Almond, an A for effort. But it's just a strike. Whippets trailing at four to nothing here in the bottom of the second inning. 
It's second innings for Whippets Baseball, presented by Holmes Community College. Well, they are just underway over to our right at Peggy Abel's Field. Amory and Kosciuszko softball. A little slow roller hit back up the middle. Maranto with a low throw, but picked up by McGowan out at first base for the first out. One down in the inning. Now batting the first baseman, number and Bailey Powers, Powers, junior first baseman, will step in. We expect Bailey to be on the mound tomorrow. Game number two. Whippets have kind of been using that rotation. So Rock into his wind up. It's a high chopper over the top. Stopped by Dozier. He'll stop and throw, and his foot came off the bag. C credit to Dozier for getting to that because he's at second base, and it's hit on the third base side of the bag. He gets to it, turns around, makes the throw, and McGowan's foot comes off the bag with a good stretch effort. Let's see what they rule it. They do give him a single. And Bailey Powers a single right there. So one out single for Bailey Powers, and it's Ryan Tillman, the shortstop, coming to the plate. But yeah, that's off the Dozier. That was a would have been a web gem if they could have completed it. First pitch swinging by Tillman. It'll send Howell back a few steps right in center field, and then he'll make the catch for the second out. Whoopets being aggressive. A lot of first pitch swings here this evening. Aiden Howard, the Third baseman, the left-hander will step in. Two outs now, Whippets trailing it four to nothing. Bailey Powers over at first base. Howard really up on that plate from the left-hand side. Pitch is out for ball one. Didn't give you the uniform look. The Amory Panthers going with the black and gold, almost like thing like a Vanderbilt sort of look with the pinstripes. They have black tops, black pants, gold pinstripes. It's Amory written in that gold. And the A is gold, and it's sort of the Oakland Athletics A, or the Las Vegas Athletics, wherever they are now. That ball gets away at first base on the pickoff attempt, and Powers is going to be able to get over to second base. So Bailey Powers down in scoring position now. 1-0 count to Aiden Howard. But yeah, the Oakland A's, they let's see their hat with the Oakland A, A and the, the hat is black and the bill is gold. Whippets going with their home whites. They have white tops, white bottoms, and it is maroon block numerals with Kosciuszko written in maroon across the chest. Howard will call for time as Ace Rock was taking a little while in, on the bump there. Whippets. A runner in scoring position. They need all kinds of runs. They trail it by four as the Panthers put up a four spot in the top of the first inning. Maranto and Powers out at second. Pitch is going to be fouled off. Oh, one and one the count to Aiden Howard. Howard. Expect to see him come in in relief if, you know, Smith gets into some trouble. It's kind of been the Whippets' M.O. all season long. You get Smith, uh, you know, about halfway through, then bring in Howard to close it out. Hard hit ball. It is over the head of Dozier at second. And they are going to send Powers home. He's there standing up. It is a two-out RBI single for Aiden Howard. Good play. Good good piece of hitting there by Howard. Heads up base running by Powers. And the Whippets get on the board. Sometimes the first one is the hardest one. Now it's Holden McGee, the sophomore second baseman. He'll come to the plate, the number nine hitter, bottom of the order. And Andrew Mansell on deck. Oh, yeah, big, big play there, four to one. Howard's going to try to take off. As it's a pop-up in center field, Howell will get to it for the final outs. But the Whippets do get 
One run on two hits, no errors, and one left on base. Two complete from Kosciuszko. Amory leads the Whippets four to one. Hello, I'm State Farm Agent Angel Alba McDonald on Highway 12 in Kosciuszko. Today, small business owners know just how much hard work is involved in starting and growing a business, but the challenges involved are not foreign to you. You're all in. Still, it doesn't hurt to have some good neighborly help. Like yourself, as a State Farm agent, I'm a small business owner as well. This enables me to help you choose the right insurance coverage to fit your small business needs. So why not insure your small business with the fellow small business owner who also happens to be a good neighbor? Contact me, State Farm agent Angel Alvin McDonald on Highway 12 at 662-289-3161. Have you been putting off coming to the dentist lately? Hello, I'm Dr. Adam Middleton from Autumn Ridge Dental in Kosciuszko. We are treating patients with a mindset we have always held, that proper, regular, preventive care can help keep your mouth healthy and functioning properly. We want all our patients to have a smile they can be proud of. Please call us at 662-289-7076 for an appointment. Come see us and we will give you something to smile about. Boswell Media Sports. Top of the third inning, four, five, and six due up for the Panthers of Amory. They lead it four to one. It'll be Jathan Ray, Ace Rock, and Paxton Wright stepping in. Jathan Ray, the left fielder, 0 for 1, grounded into the fielder's choice back in the first inning. First pitch from Smith is outside, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Third innings for Whippets Baseball. Brought to you by Renaissance Insurance as that curveball also stayed a little off the plate. So Smith delivers. Hard hit ball. Foul. Third base line. So Jathan Ray. of lefties in the lineup as Ray calls for time. You got some Whippet tennis players that's going to be playing in the state tournament next week as that ball is fouled off. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, Whippet tennis team as a team was put eliminated from the Postseason earlier this week, he went on the road to take on South Pontotoc, lost that one four to three. But the individuals are going to play next week. Ball hit to the right side, holded McGee has it, fires it to first for the first out. One down in the inning, and it is Ace Rock coming to the plate. Yeah, once again, another lefty. I mean, I think the only actual lefty I saw in the field was Howell. So a lot of these guys bat left-handed. They're play in the field right-handed. First pitch to Rock is a strike. Either that or we got a lot of switch hitters. And a curve ball that Rock can't figure out. It. Bottom fell out of that one, and it's 0-2 uh, quickly to the Amory Panthers pitcher. So here's the pitch. Swing and strike three. That's the third strikeout of the game for Braxton Smith. Those strikeouts brought to you by Italic County Farm Bureau, and it's Paxton Wright, the third baseman, will Come to hit with two outs. So, yeah. Whip it tennis team. You got Hayes Tyler, Caden Tyler playing in singles. Brother sister duo there as it pitches a strike on the outside corner. Caden Tyler, girls singles. Hayden, uh, Hayes Tyler, boys singles. Then your boys' doubles team and your girls' double team also going to be playing in the state tournament. Another fast ball that catches the outside corner for strike two. 0-2 quickly to Paxton Wright. 
Got him to chase the curve ball. It was dropped, but Kewen will fire down the first. And the side is retired in order. Fourth strike out of the ball game for Braxton Smith. No runs, no hits, no errors. And nobody left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Kosciuszko trails it by three. Before you begin those do-it-yourself projects outside your home or business, be sure you know where your underground utilities are located. Always call before you dig. One easy phone call to 811 can protect you from injury and expense. Plus, it's the law in Mississippi. Make the call and avoid serious or fatal injury. For more electrical safety tips, contact Central Electric Power Association. Serving you since 1937. An equal opportunity provider and employer. Boswell Media Sports. Bottom of the third inning. The Whippets will have the top of the order due up. One, two, and three. Andrew Betzel, Baird Kewen, and Benny Powell. They trail it four to one. Third innings for Whippets baseball are brought to you by Renaissance Insurance. Amory is the number four seed out of Region 1. We can take a look at the bracket for baseball. You got Ripley taking on Louisville. Newton County is facing off against North Pontotoc. Uh, On the other side of this bracket, it's New Albany and Northeast Lauderdale. And and then the other bracket, you got South Pontotoc, uh, hosting Choctaw Central, Caledonia hosts Tishomingo County, West Lauderdale hosts Senatobia, and Itawamba is hosting Houston. So that's what the north half of the bracket looks like. As Andrew Manchel steps in, looks at a high fastball for ball one. Yeah, the other half of this bracket is New Albany and Northeast Lauderdale. So that is the two seed. From that ball is hit into center field, down in front of Howell. Mansell on with a leadoff single. Big hit there for the Whippets senior Mansell. And it'll send Baird Kewen to the plate. Kewen was called out on strikes and only other at bat. But yeah, New Albany's the number two seed out of District 2. The New Northeast Lauderdale is the three seed out of District 4. So that's the other half. So whoever wins this Series, Whippets and Amory will take on the winner of New Albany and Northeast Lauderdale. So, and then after that, it kind of bracket is a little bit too far away. Mansell trying to go down to second base. He's in there safely. The pitch was up and in. I actually thought it hit Baird Kewen, but Kewen didn't walk to first, so he must not have. But now we got a runner at score in position, and nobody out. Baird Kewen at the plate. Good job, Baird. So, nobody out. Let's see if they want to try to bunt with Kewen right here. McGowan playing in on the grass at third. At first, I should say. Kewen does lay down a bunt. Rock gets it. He'll throw to Dozier covering the bag, and it is a sack bunt that sends a runner over to third base. So, Kewen... Does his job and moves Mansell up 90 feet. Now batting center fielder number 11, Benny Powell. It brings Benny Powell, the Whippets center fielder, to the plate. He's got a single on the afternoon. And if you're watching that Frank Chevy video stream, you see it going across the bottom of your screen right now. Powell leading the team in average. And hits at second base, then uh, doubles and runs scored. Yeah. Opens him with a curve ball. And it is low for ball one. Four to one, Amory in the lead over Kosciuszko. This is game one of the playoffs. Game two tomorrow, depending on if the weather wants to cooperate. Powell chops a curve ball foul. Makes it one and one. Benny Powell, the junior center fielder. Howell is shaded a little bit to the left. Actually, they have everybody shaded to the left. There's a whole lot of room down the right field line. One-one pitch that is hit to right field. 
Galt had him shaded just perfectly, but Mansell is going to be able to tag up and score, and the Whippets cut that deficit in half. It's 4-2. to two. But, yeah, the, the, the shift was perfect because Galt did not have to move on that one. He, he just stayed right where he was. Now he's going to move a little bit closer to the line. Shift back around as John White Rusco comes to the plate. Pitch inside, ball one. Rusco grounded out to end the first inning. Oh, excuse me, flew out to end the first inning. Pull to the right side. It's Dozier at second base who sits down on it and flips it to first for the final out of the inning. However, the Whippets are able to get one run on one hit, no errors, and nobody left on base through three complete. Amory leads Kosciuszko 4-2. to two. The beauty of spring starts at the Atala County Co-op. From your lawn to your flower beds, the Atala County Co-op will make it stand out against the rest with fountain, outdoor furniture, plants, and yard art. It's t-shirt weather, and the Atala County Co-op has a large selection of Old Row, Southern Point, and Strut and Cotton t-shirts, and new spring apparel from Ariat and Carhartt. For the perfect drinking experience, grab a brewmate before you head out to the baseball or softball field. The Itala County Co-op, Highway 12 East in Kosciuszko. What moves you down the road and through the woods? Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales with utility trailers in all sizes and truck beds. Central Tire Sales can customize to your specifications. Central Tire Service puts your life in motion with tires engineered to last for your ATV and vehicle. A full service mechanic and tire shop. Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales across from Prairie Farms in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Start the top of the fourth inning. Kosciuszko gets a run back. It's 4-2 to two as they trail Amory. And it will be the bottom third of the order. Seven, eight, nine coming to the plate for the Avery Panthers. That is Ethan Childers, Kai Dozier, and Ben Galt. Childers is the designated hitter. And let's see, he's got a double. Double at a run score. Or excuse me, a run driven in. Back in that big four-run first inning, the Panthers were able to put up. Smith will get into his wind up. Fast ball outside corner called. Strike one. Got an update for you from Peggy Abel's field after one inning. The Lady Whippets lead Amory three to nothing. So that one's going on just off to our left. I think we might have a live look in there here in just a little bit or listen in. And there's an excuse me swing. And he went around for strike two. Fourth innings for Whippets Baseball. Playoff Baseball brought to you by Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts. Yes, sir. Took a little bit off of it, a little off speed there, and didn't get the outside corner call. It'll be one ball, two strikes. There's a curve ball f- that Childers comes up empty on. It'll be Strikeout number five for Braxton Smith. One down in the inning. Those strikeouts brought to you by the Itali County Farm Bureau. Kai Dozier stepping in. 0 for 1. He hit a fly ball to end the first inning. A big first inning. Eight batters to the plate. Chases a high one on the first pitch for strike one. So, yeah, we'll try to give you that whippet softball look in here momentarily as that pitch stays up for ball one. Makes it one and one. Uh, Ball's fouled out over the press box behind home plate. Would have been a good, good visual there from our camera setup. Our online streams brought to you by Frank Chevrolet, GMC, Highway 35 North here in Kosciuszko. One, two pitches popped up on the infield. Who's going to have it? Kewen catches it falling down about 
halfway up the first baseline, and it's out number two. It looked like Smith was going to call everybody off, and then Kewen ends up with it, and it is out number two. And it will be Kai Dozier stepping in. No, excuse me, that was Kai Dozier. Ben Galt. Galt singled to lead off the second inning. That time he looks at a high one for ball one. Smith winds and delivers and fast ball outside corner called strike one to even up that count. One one pitch is a curve ball. It's popped up, but it's going to get out of play. Off off to the first base side. Bailey Powers gave it chase. Thought the ballpark might hold it, but. Oh, well, as it is, someone's going to get a blow pop. <laughs> they turn that foul ball back in. There's, there seems to be a fight over there for it. They want that blow pop. There's another ball that's hit foul. That one's not going to result in a blow pop. Rusko will get it, but he can't get a blow pop. But yeah, if you return a foul ball here to one of the Diamond Girls, you get a blow pop. That's incentive. When I was a kid, it used to be like a drink, I think is what it was. There's a little ball hit to the right side of the infield. It will be McGee who ranges way over to get the final out of the inning as he throws it off to Bailey Powers. And for the second inning in a row, the side is retired in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. Through three and a half, the Avery Panthers lead it four to two. What moves you down the road and through the woods? Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales with utility trailers in all sizes and truck beds. Central Tire Sales can customize to your specifications. Central Tire Service puts your life in motion with tires engineered to last for your ATV and vehicle. A full service mechanic and tire shop. Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales across from Prairie Farms and Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. And it will be the bottom of the fourth inning. Whippets will sit five, six, and seven to the plate. And while we have a little bit of a lull, we're going to see if we can, we can maybe give you a little live listen in to the Whippet softball game. Maybe. It's all 1 0 count here to Martin. Swing and a miss, and Boykin off the bag, throw down to first, and she's able to get back. Boykin is safely back into first, dive it back. But a 1 1 count here to Martin. So there you go, Scott Hines with uh, the play by play over on Cruising 98.3. Little live look in there uh, for Kosciuszko at Ambry Softball. Last update we had the Lady Whippets were up three to nothing. That one's taking place off to our right, but it's Braxton Smith stepping in for the Whippets. He swings at a curve ball and tips it off for strike one. But yeah, Whippet softball is taking on Amory. And they'll be going on the road tomorrow. That ball's popped up, going to get out of play. It'll be another blow pop. Yeah, Whippet softball going on the road tomorrow. Smithville, that's where the softball team's going to play its game. So baseball will play Amory at Itawama Community College. Softball is going to play at Smithville High School. Swinging strike three. And that is the second strike out of the ball game for Ace Rock. It will be Bailey Powers stepping in. Now batting the first baseman, number 15, Bailey Powers. Powers singled and came around to score in the second inning. A one down in the inning now. He sends one foul. I think that one is going to be over at Peggy Abel's field. So Powers reached base last time. Legged out an infield single. Curve ball stays inside and low. Yeah. 
Ball's hit in the left field. It is going to get down for a base hit in front of Ray. A good piece of hitting there by Bailey Powers, and it'll bring Ryan Tillman to the plate. Tillman hit one on the nose last time, but he hit it right to Jack Howell out in center field. It was the first pitch swinging, which the Whippets have kind of been doing. They've been really aggressive this evening. One after a lot of those first pitch swings. They trail it by two. Up and in, ball one. So it's 1-0 count. That ball's in the dirt. It gets away from Allman and Powers able to take second base. He was moving on the on the pitch anyway, but Allman lost it on the it was a pitch right in front of the plate. He blocked it, but it it, it caromed off his uh, chest plate up into the air, and so Powers able to easily get over to second base. As I said, he was stealing on the pitch anyway. He's just uh, fortuitous enough that it. Bounced off to the right side. So now Whippets with a runner in scoring position. 2-0 count to the shortstop, Ryan Tillman. Look back at second base. Tillman shows bunt. It is Rock that comes off the mound to try to throw and gets him by a step at first base. But the runner moves over to third. Good bunt there by Tillman. Rock had to run a long way for it and kind of had to throw it going backwards. But just some good defense there. And it will be Aiden Howard stepping in. Last time you had this situation of Howard at the plate, Powers on base. Howard sent one into right field. Brought him home. So let's see if the... Duo works again. Fastball was called strike one. I thought it was a little bit low, but didn't. Well, Ace Rock, as I said earlier, still got to be the best name ever for a pitcher. Ace? I mean, come on. 0-1 oh, pitch to the lefty. It's hit back up the middle off the glove. Moranto gets to it, and he can't knock it. He knocks it down, but can't complete the play. So give Moranto an A for effort. But the Whippets cut that lead down to just one. That's going to be an infield single and another RBI for Aiden Howard. And Bailey Powers comes around to score. So that one was just hit to the right side of the bag. Moranto got to it. Still would have been a hard play to get up and make, but when he jumped up, just not able to uh, grab the ball and make the play as Holden McGee looks at strike one. It, the official scorer gave that an error on Moranto. We're still going to keep him with a hit. And it pitches up for ball one. One one count. So we're going to keep it. Uh, we're going to keep it a hit to Howard, as that was not a routine play at all for Braden Moranto. So Howard's going to get a hit on my scorecard. Hit an RBI. Howard hoofing it for second. Here comes the throw down. Tag is made. Right, they're going to maybe appeal over to first base. No, no appeal. But Howard is caught stealing. However, the Whippets are able to cut into that lead. They get one run on two hits. There were no errors and nobody left on base. Through four complete innings, Kosciuszko trails Amory 4-2-3. Frank Chevrolet GMC, making your driving dreams come true. Hi, my name is Miles from Frank Chevy GMC. Miles, what do we got going on this month? Papa, is it true we have unreal rates? Miles, unreal and unbelievable. 0% for 36, 2.9 for 72 on select models, and up to $10,000 off select models. 
Papa, we have the most cars we ever have in four years. That's right, Miles. We're making driving dreams come true right here on Highway 35 North in Kosciuszko. Shop us online at frankchevy.com or call 662-289-4611. Never been a better time than today. Papa, can I go fishing now? Frank Chevrolet GMC. Highway 35 North in Kosciuszko. Chevrolet. Find new roads. Frank Chevrolet GMC. Making your driving dreams come true. Boswell Media Sports. Top of the order coming to the plate for the Panthers in the top of the fifth inning. One, two, and three. They lead it over Kosciuszko by one run. Four to three. First pitch to Jack Howell is low in the dirt for ball one. We understand Jack Howell, the junior, committed to play for LSU. But he and Maranto, the only two starting starters back from that 3A state championship team as he calls for time. Yeah, this uh, Amory team, two-time state champs, is fastball called strike one to even up the count. Last year, Amory went, let's see, 32-5, and five, and they won the 3A state championship over St. Stanislaus. 1-1 one, one pitch is a curve ball hit into center field. Benny Powell has to run a little ways, but he's able to make the catch for out number one. Now and I'll give you a trivia question if you know what St. Stanislaus's mascot is. So think on that for a little bit, and uh, we'll give you the answer. But game one, they lost 7-3, to three, and then game two, they won 8-5. to five. Game three, they won 6-3. to three. So that capped off the second state championship in a row. As Braden Maranto looks at ball one, the left-hander. He is committed to play baseball for Southern Miss, and we understand he was the quarterback against uh, Kazi. He was the quarterback for Amory, and then, you know, Kazi and Amory played in the opening round of the football playoffs. He fouls that one off, but we understand he is not going to play football anymore, going to concentrate on baseball. And in the 2022 state championship, let's see, Amory went 28 and five, and they swept Seminary, nine to one and 11 to one. Fastball, I guess up a little bit. Two balls, one strike. Let me give you the answer to that trivia question. If you know what St. Stanislaus's mascot is, we'll give it to you after this pitch from Braxton Smith. Hard hit ball high in the air, right side. Rusco giving chase. Is he going to get to it? He will. He gets it on the warning track on the foul territory down the right field line, and there are two outs. Now batting the first base for number eight. Now McGowan. McGowan. Dow McGowan comes in, the first baseman. But the St. Stanislaus mascot, the Rockachaws. St. Stanislaus Rockachaws. And do you know what a rocket chaw is? That that should have been the trivia question, if you even know what that is. Uh, let's see, McGowan's over two. He reached on an error and scored. Swing swings at a curveball and uh, comes up empty. But a rocket chaw is uh, like a like a thorn, sort of a burr that grows on the beach. St. Stanislaus is down on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Pitch comes inside, ball one. But so a rocket shawl is sort of, like I said, a sort of a sand thorn, a burr. So that's what it is. Pitch is in the dirt outside, ball two. Kosciuszko has some history with St. Stanislaus. His boys soccer team took on St. Stanislaus in the uh, state cha- soccer state championship in 2015. Pitch fouled back to even up the count. Two balls, two strikes. Fun fact, another fun fact about St. Stanislaus, they have the only Heisman Trophy winner from the state of Mississippi, Doc Blanchard. Won the Heisman Trophy. He played for the Golden Knights of Army. I like the 1920s. Pitches up high for ball three and make the count full. And as I understand it, the... Doc Blanchard's Heisman Trophy is located there at the school, at St. Stanislaus High School. It's donated to the uh, school there. 3-2 pitch. 
It's hit into left field. Mansell gonna try to get to it. He'll just watch it go over the left field wall. Didn't think that Maranto got enough of it. It wasn't, I didn't think it was hit that hard, but he was just able to get it out. Let's see, it's 345 in right field. He hit it 346, so he'll touch them all. That's a home run. No, oh, excuse me, that's not Maranto, that's McGowan. That, that's McGowan, excuse me, not Maranto, that will touch them all. And it will be Jathan Ray. Yeah, I even think Mansell thought off the bat that he could get to it. It just kept carrying and carrying. Fast ball right down the middle to Jathan Ray. But yeah, 345 out there in left center, and it, it, it went 345 and a half. I mean, it didn't clear the fence by much, but I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, foul ball back towards the over the dugout. So that makes the score five to three. With Amory in the lead. 0-2 pitch is hit off the glove of Smith and it's through for a base hit. So it'll be a two ounce single. Yeah, Smith got a glove on it, but even if he doesn't get a glove on it, it's hit hard enough that I'm not sure McGee's gonna be able to make that play out at second base. So that's a single. Runner on first, and ace rock. The pitcher comes to the plate. Another one of those left-handed batters. Pass ball upstairs, ball one. Let's see, fifth innings for Whippets Baseball, brought to you by Central Tire Service. Stop by and see them on the bypass. Veterans Memorial Drive. There's a throw over to first. I believe I just saw that Central Tire Service is going to start detailing vehicles again. So you need a little something done to your vehicle. Dropping off there and they'll clean it up nice for you. I hope it's trying to clean this one up as there's a ball hitting right field. Rusco has it played perfectly. Catches it for the final out. So, Amory gets one run on two hits. No errors and no one left on base. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Amory leads it 5-2-3. Premier Medical Group, PMG. Your good health is our priority. Did you know you do not have to drive for specialized care? Premier Medical Group in Kosciuszko partners with specialists in urology, cardiology, neurology, and orthopedics. Have your primary care provider refer you to a PMG specialist today. Premier Medical Group, PMG, good health is our priority. When birthdays and special occasions arrive, Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts is the best place to shop for fashionable and classic gifts, home decor, jewelry, hobo purses and wallets. They have new spring footwear and clothing arriving daily. And remember, Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts has the most recent wedding registry. Whether you're getting married or shopping for the bride and groom, shop Sullivan's. Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts, Highway 12 across from McDonald's in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Bottom of the fifth inning here from the Italian County Fairgrounds. Amory leads Kosciuszko 5-2-3. It'll be the number nine hitter, Holden McGee. Up and then back to the top of the order. So it'll be Holden McGee, Andrew Mansell, and Barrett Kewitt. Now going on up in Starkville this weekend, you got Mississippi State hosting Super Bulldog weekend, and the baseball team is hosting Auburn. And uh, we understand that Ted Milton is going to be honored. Coach Milton was on with us earlier this season when the 1974 Whippet State Championship team was honored for the 50 years of their state championship. Coach Milton was the coach of that team. Well, the 1971 Mississippi State Ball Club that made it to the College World Series, they're being recognized in Starkville uh, tonight. And so Coach Milton will be on the field with that crew because he was uh, on that first team that went to the Cods World Series. Holden McGee, first pitch down the line. It rolls into the gap. 
He's legging it out for second base. He'll get in there with a leadoff double. And that gets the crowd going here at the ballpark. And it's at the beginning right here. It sends Andrew Mansell to the plate with nobody out. Mansell singled and scored in the third. And we told you that the Whippets have been really aggressive. First pitch coming up swinging, and that time, that time McGee got one down in the left field corner. Holding McGee. Now we got the top of the order due up. Fifth innings for Whippets Baseball brought to you by Central Tire Service. An update from Peggy Abel's field off to our right. Give it to you after this. Long look back and the ball rolls away from Maranto on the pickoff play, but doesn't roll quite far enough into center field that McGee's going to be able to get over to third base. Bottom of the third inning over at Peggy Abel's Field, and it's a Whippet softball team in the lead, 5 to nothing, over the Amory Lady Panthers. Scott Hines on the call for that one from Boswell Media Sports over on Cruising 98.3 and then the Boswell Media Sports YouTube channel. Mansell lays a bunt down the third baseline. It hits and rolls foul. Boy, that one... It just hit a spot and took off. I mean, it looked like it was going to roll right down the line, and it hit, and it just went foul as foul could be. Man, that one, that would have been a base hit because Mansell, well, nobody throwing out Mansell where you put that one down. But as it is, it's a strike, strike one. So I think that one, the uh, – all the Amory infielders would have just been waiting on it because I thought it was literally just going to keep rolling. Somehow it hit a spot and just went foul. Well, it's an 0-1 count, Mansell. We'll look at strike two. Out, outside corner. Hey, Mansell had a touchdown catch in that football game that Amory and Kosciuszko played. I think it was the uh, first touchdown the Whippets had in the game. Oh. A long look back at second. Mansell chops one foul left side. Yeah, I think we got some audio from that that game. Well, we, might, we might could play it right here. Uh, after whatever happens here between Andrew Mansell and Ace Rock. Mansell with an 0-2 count. Ace Rock still on the mound for the Panthers. Oh, look at second. Here's the pitch. Swinging curve ball. It gets him going down for strike three. And that is the third strike out of the game for Ace Rock. First out. But yeah, Baird Kewen stepping in. As I see, Mansell had that big touchdown. Here, takes the snap. He's throwing for the end zone. Got Andrew Mansell wide open, makes the catch in the end zone. Touchdown. Whippets convert on a fourth down and long. Caught by Smith. He fumbles the ball. Barrett Kewen going to recover it at the two-yard line. Yeah, a couple of highlights there from that Amory Kosciuszko football game. Andrew Mansell, Barrett Kewen. The Whippets have played in that game. Benny Powell also played in that game for the Whippet football team. First pitch is low, ball one. Kewen today is 0 for 2, but he's, he had a sacrifice bunt back in the third, and he struck out in the first. But yeah, that Amory Kosciuszko football game was 24 to 23. Amory won that one on November 3rd. A close game up there at Tupelo High School. 1-0 pitch, hit in the shallow center field. Anybody going to get to it? No. And it's going to be on the corners with no, with only one out. Yeah, just a little blooper over into center field. And it looked like uh, Maranto might be able to get out there to it, but Howell called him off and let it fall in front of him. As we have Bradley Goss that came in to Courtesy run for the catcher, Baird Kewen, and it's Benny Powell at the plate representing the go-ahead run. You got the tying run at first base. Runners on the corners. One out, and Benny Powell at the plate. Powell is 
One for two. He singled in the first. Sack fly scored a uh, drove in a run in the third. Goss, big lead at first. He's taken off. Hit and run. A hanging curve ball was high and Powell fouled it all forward towards the locker room. Oh, I say that the that Goss took off. He did take off and it looked like he stopped. So it might have been that faux steal, but or he might have just stopped when he heard the ball was going up in the air. Somebody might have told him to stop. But anyway, looked like it could have been a hit and run. Now Goss is taking off. There's a throw down, but it kind of that fake throw as Dozier comes over and cuts the throw off. So second and third. And they say that was a strike. Oh, okay. All right, then. I thought that one was a little bit low, but it's 0-2 to Benny Powell. Runners on second and third, one out. Go away, go away. The pitch bounces off the umpire's face mask, and one run is going to come around to score. Everybody moves up a base. So now the tying run just 90 feet away. Yeah, that one bounced. It's going to be a wild pitch. It bounced in front of the plate, came up, hit the umpire's mask, and then scooted off to the right very quickly. So Holden McGee, he comes around to score and makes it 5-4. to four. Benny Powell at the plate. Got the tie and run. All right, third base. Infield's coming in. they probably going home with it right here. Curveball is going to be hit in the center field. It is down. Here comes the throw. It's going to be up the line, and Powell in at second base. He has tied the ball game. That'll be a single, and then Powell gets to second on the throw. Oh, Whippets have tied the ball game. Runner down at second base is Benny Powell, and it's John Wyatt Rusco. In at the plate, so Goss comes in to score, representing Barrett Kewitt. Rusco today is 0 for 2, a couple of fly ball outs. He's been aggressive. Both have been first pitch swings. See if he does it here. No, he's going to bunt. Lays it down the third base side. Rock's the only one that can get to it. He does, but the runner goes over to third base. So now the sack bunt has the go-ahead run. Down at third. So Rusco does his job of moving the runner over. Good defense by Amory. And it'll be Braxton Smith, the pitcher, at the plate. Smith is 0 for 2. He struck out his last at bat. But, hey, he could give himself the lead to work with right here if he's able to find one through the infield. First pitch is fastball. Corner strike. one to Braxton Smith. It's Benny Powell down at third base. Swinging strike two. And, and, uh, with the breaking ball there, and it just it just dies. I mean, when it gets to the plate, it just goes straight down. So, good looking pitch for Ace Rock, but Whippets need to get that run home. And there's two down, and it's Smith at the plate. Comes up high, hits him in the shoulder. Have runners on the corners now. Going to get a courtesy runner, maybe Weatherby. Yep, yep. Weatherby, Kenyon Weatherby, the sophomore, going to come in and run for the pitcher. So now you got Bailey Powers at the plate. Powers is two for two, single, scored two runs. Well, let's see if he can continue to keep it keep it rolling as we had some sort of stoppage there. I'm not really sure what that was about, but he got Weatherby over at first. Uh, he's probably going to be getting over to second as quickly. Here he is going to take off. They're going to get the possum play, and he is safe. Here comes Benny Powell home, and he is safe. And Weatherby's going to go over to third. The possum play gets him. 
So you get an error on the throw home, and Whippets take the lead six to five. Yeah, Weatherby just takes off running. Rock turns around, throws to second, just not in time. And Powell is, you know, with his kind of speed, he's coming all the way. And it was Maranto that tried to throw home, goes through the legs of Almond. And the Whippets take the 6-5 to five lead. Powers swings at the first one, tips it foul. So that is just the first pitch thrown to the plate. Powell comes around to score. Whippets have played it three here in the inning. That curveball stays and catches the inside corner. Are you good? O2 count to Bailey Powers. Ace Rock looks in. Swinging strike three, and that will end the inning. But the Whippets take the lead. Three runs on three hits, one error, and one man left on base. Through five, complete Kosciuszko with a 6-5 to five lead over Amory. Here's something I bet you don't know. You could go to college for free. Do you have a 20 on your ACT? Yes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait. So my tuition is free? Where? Home CC. Yes, every word you just heard is absolutely true. Goodman, Kosciuszko, Grenada, Ridgeland, Yazoo City, online. Does not matter. Why in the world would Holmes Community College offer free tuition with a 20 on the ACT? Simple. At Holmes, we don't want you drowning in college debt the rest of your life. You know, I have heard students with associate degrees from Holmes often make more money than four-year students with bachelor and master degrees. True. Plus, at Holmes, you get three-day weekends. So there's that. Sweet. So now you know. Your tuition is free with a 20 on your ACT at Holmes CC. No place like Holmes. Holmes Community College. Boswell Media Sports. Well, the Whippets claim the lead in the bottom of the fifth inning, six to five. They find three hits. It was a double by Holden McGee that led things off, and then back-to-back -back hits from Kewen and Powell, and that's how the Whippets uh, took the lead. Uh, six to five as we get set for the top of the sixth inning. Five, excuse me, six, seven, and eight uh, due up. So that will be Paxton Wright. That ball's hit into right field. Rusco on the run and we'll track it down for the first out. The first pitch swing in there for Paxton Wright, the third baseman. Is one out and Ethan Childers, the designated here, comes to the plate. He's one for two, doubled and drove in a run in the first, struck out his last at bat. Braxton Smith with five strikeouts through five and a thirds innings. So Childers looks at the first pitch for the swings and comes up empty, fouls it off. Saw Jacob Nunn in the house, former Whippet, playing baseball now over at East Mississippi Community College. Hey, in this game last year, the first game of the postseason, uh, Nunn threw a, a no-hitter, no-hit, Ponatonk. Pitch right down the middle for strike two. Yeah, Nunn. And that game one win for Kosciuszko, the no-hitter. Unfortunately, the Whippets not able to finish off the Warriors. Lost that one in three games. And none, it's a couple of the former Whippets are sitting over there. A little bit low off the plate. One ball, two strikes. Two. Ethan Childers. Let me see the pitch count here. Okay. 86 pitches. This is pitch number 86. Curve ball that I think Bear Kewen took the brunt of. He fouled that one off, and he uh, kind of maybe caught off the just above the shin guard. Yeah, yeah, he's pointing to a. Little bit above his knee, so maybe that, that meaty part right above the shin guard 
It took one. That'll, that'll sting. But, hey, it don't sting as bad. The Whippets are able to hold on to the win. One ball, two strikes to Baird Kewitt. After the game, we'll have our Wendy's postgame show. We'll probably try to wrap it up pretty quickly. We might be able to get over there and see a little bit of the Whippet softball game that's going on. Last update we had there is five to nothing. Lady Whippets up on Amory. Curveball low off the plate, even up the count at two and two. Let's see. Yeah, we mentioned that's uh, that was pitch number 88 right there for Braxton Smith. So, trying to get through this inning. That fastball sails up. So, Childers is able to work the count back uh, to full after being down 0 and 2. And here comes the payoff pitch to. Childers, it's up for ball four. Well, that's just the that's just the first walk issued by Braxton Smith. Runner on first base. It'll draw a visit to the mound from pitching coach Wesley Dew. So we got an update from Peggy Abel's field. Seven to nothing now. Uh, going to the bottom of the fourth inning. Appreciate Donald back at the studio keeping us up to date on that. We got Scott Hines on the call for that one. That one's over on cruising 98.3. Throughout the postseason, baseball will be on Breezy 101. Softball will be on cruising 98.3. As long as baseball is still in the playoffs, they will be on Breezy 101. As long as so, only time the softball team would jump over to Breezy would be if the baseball team uh, was eliminated and softball was still in the postseason. But Coach Dew brought his entire infield in for that pitching, uh, not, not a pitching change, but just sort of a, a talk there. Those brought to you by Central Tire Service. So whip it so. I was hoping for a double play ball right here from Kai Dozier, the second baseman. He's got a couple of pop-ups. He's going to show but. Pulls it back, and the pitch is elevated, ball one. So, yeah, tying run over at first base. No surprise here that the uh, Amory Panthers want to get it to second base. So they're thinking they're thinking sack bunt with their second baseman, Dozier. And a chant off to our right. And there's a snap throw to first. Uh, pitch was called out, but close play down at first base as... McEwen jumps up and throws down. They call that a strike. I thought it, I thought he called it a ball, but it is one and one count. McEwen had to turn around and find out for himself what the count was. One one. Ball's popped up. Who's gonna get to it? Andrew Mansell calls everybody off in left field, and he'll make the catch. So yeah, Tillman and Powell going out for that, but. Mansell has the best look at it, coming straight in. Now shallow left center field, two outs now. And it is Ben Galt, the right fielder, that will come to the plate. Galt is one for two. He singled in the second, grounded out in the fourth inning. He is the number nine hitter. Runner takes off. There's a, a hard hit foul ball, kind of came in and and jammed him a little bit, got him on the handle. Whippets lead at six to five over Amory, top of the sixth inning. We had a few other games going on around the county this evening. The Ethel Lady Tiger softball is playing Lumber or was playing Lumberton. They won that one, and Ethel Tiger baseball is going to take on Lumberton. They started at six o'clock, I believe. That pitch is off the plate, but the uh, Ethel Lady Tigers got the big win, 17-2, three innings. So they'll go on the road tomorrow. Close play over at first base on the pickoff, but he's back in time. So, yeah, baseball and softball have been pretty good here in Itala County. You have three region winners with Kosciuszko baseball winning district, Ethel softball, Ethel baseball winning the district. Fastball outside corner called strike two. 
One ball, two strikes to Galt. Wind kind of picking up here. As Smith trying to get out of the inning. Curve ball, it's a pop up. Right side of the infield, who's got it? It looks like Bailey Powers got it for out number three. And that will do it for the Panthers. No runs, no hits, no errors. One man left on base. Six to five, Kosciuszko win the lead as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. When an electrical shortage in your office causes extensive smoke and water damage or that musty odor indicates you might have a mold problem, you need a lot more than just help cleaning up. That's why SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands is the authority when disaster strikes. We offer all the cleanup and construction services to take your home or business to good as new and as soon as possible. So no matter what happens, there's just one call you need to make. Call SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands at 662-289-7473 to see how we can help you back to like it never even happened. Franchises are independently owned and operated. When it comes to insurance, one size does not fit all. At Alpha, the Chris Coleman Agency in Kosciuszko, knowing the customer and their individual needs is what we pride ourselves on. We know how important it is for everyone to have the peace of mind that your insurance coverages are tailored for you. Our team recognizes your life and your unique needs. That is why we provide you with numerous insurance options, an easy claim process, and personal attention that is second to none, all at one location without breaking the bank. Call us today at 662-289-1024 or visit us at 235 North Madison Street off the square in Kosciuszko. At Alpha, the Chris Coleman Agency, we guarantee the right fit for you and all of your insurance needs. Boswell Media Sports. The bottom third of the order will come to the plate for the Whippets in the bottom of the sixth inning. That'll be Ryan Tillman to lead things off. The Whippets with a one-run lead, 6-5 to five over Amory. First pitch is a fastball outside corner to Tillman. Tillman's 0 for 2. He did have a sacrifice bunt back in the fourth. That's the first pitch he's taken. He's been swinging. He swung at the first pitch in his first at bat. It was a fly ball. And, that, and then he gets that sack bunt. There's a little slow roller to the third base side. Wright gets it, jumps up, and will have a throw by a step. Just good defense over at third base. Tip your cap to uh, that is uh, Wright, Paxton Wright. And that'll be one down in the inning. But, yeah, like I said, you just got to sometimes, yeah. Say good play, and that's what that was for Wright. Aiden Howard comes to the plate. Boy, Howard's having himself a game. The lefty looks at ball one. Howard's got two singles and two runs driven in. No, of the he got 33 percent of the Whippets' runs is accounted for. He swings and can't figure out the curveball. It's all over the top of it. Ace Rock will lean in and get the sign. Stays off the plate for ball two. Two balls and one strike. Sixth innings for Whippets Baseball. Brought to you by Alpha Insurance. Chris Coleman Agency as that pitch elevated for ball three. Lefty Howard trying to get a, the Whippets a one out base runner. There's a hard hit ball. It's off the glove of Dozier out at second base. So, well, probably, you know what? We're going to give him a hit as well. That one was a hard hit ball. We'll give him a hit. It would be three hits for Aiden Howard. Yeah, they, now the score does give him a hit. Running, and we will have a new runner Christian coming in, Thrash. Christian Thrash. That could mean that we might see Howard on the mound uh, to the, the seventh inning. So that, that's something, something to think about as Thrash comes in to run and uh, Howard might go start throwing some warm-up tosses to try to finish things out in the top of the – Seventh. But, yeah, that ball was hit hard, and uh, Dozier was playing back on the dirt, and it just took a, a, a bad hop. And so and so, uh, it goes down as a single. That's a third single of the game for Aiden Howard. 
Holden McGee coming in, the number nine hitter. He started off the big fifth inning for the Whippets with a double. Double down the left field line. Ends up coming around to score. Well, let's see if they, if they give him the green light here if they want to bunt that runner over to second. They do. They let him swing, and he fouls it off. So, Whippets trying to get maybe get an insurance run right here. Leading it by one, bottom of the sixth inning. Game one of the playoffs. We'll have game two for you tomorrow from Itawamba Community College up in Fulton. Not quite sure yet if we'll have the video stream as it's kind of a wait and see when we get there. Pitch over to or throw over to first as Christian Thrash is back in plenty of time. Yeah, 2 o'clock first pitch. Now there's some rain in the forecast up there, so this is it's, it's, it's a whole wait-and-see situation tomorrow. But one way or another, we'll have the game for you on some kind of outlet. Pitch is inside, and Thrash goes down to second. It was a real late throw by Almond. Almost like he didn't uh, even think about doing throwing. It still ended up being a close play at second base, but uh, he is safe. However... Yeah, this is just a sort of a late throw. Anyway, runner in scoring position. He got Holden McGee at the plate. McGee, the sophomore, second baseman. He really tagged one uh, to start the fifth inning. I mean, he hit one, and it got down in the corner, down the left field line. Uh, Rock will look back. Uh, hit through the gap at third. Maranto gets to it, but that's all he can do is knock it down. Whippets will have runners on first and third, and only one out. So, yeah, that time, Maranto, he had been holding the runner on. If he's not holding the runner on, that is a routine play. If that's if he's not holding Christian Thrash on at second, he's able to make that throw over to first, and the runner probably stays at second. But as it was, he was holding the runner on, so he has to go deep in the hole at shortstop. And to his credit, he got to it. I thought it was going to roll through, but he got to it and knocked it down, but there was no opportunity for a throw. So we'll go back to the top of the order. And it's Andrew Mansell, the senior, at the plate. And let's see, he's one for three. He singled and scored in the third. Let's see what the Whippets do. He's going to square around to Bunt. Going to lay it down right in front of the mound. The only play will be to first. And he is out at first. Now it's Baird Kewitt stepping in. Everybody, or I should say the runner at second, first moves up to second. So we got a sack bunt. And runners on second and third with two outs. And the catcher, Baird Kewitt, stepping up to the plate. Kewitt singled in the fifth. He had a sack bunt in the third. Right here. And he... Any hit through the infield is uh, probably going to score two runs as Kewen steps out for time. Only Rock is sitting at 70 pitches. He's throwing a good one. But the Whippets have been able to put together some runs. Pitch is in the dirt, blocked by Almond. For ball one. So, conventional wisdom with first base open. Normally, you think you wouldn't pitch to Kewen, right? But they are two outs. And Benny Powell is looming on deck, and you definitely don't want to bring him up to the plate if you're Amory. Well, it's hit to Maranto. He knocks it down. Here's going to be a throw, and he's able to get up and get the throw. And uh, that will end the inning. So good defense there by Maranto. Ends the threat. Swippets get no runs on two hits. There were no errors and two left on base. Whippets lead it by one going to the seventh inning. Hey, I'm James Matters with Farm Bureau Insurance. For the past six years, I've been blessed to serve our community as a local insurance agent. When most people think of insurance, they think of their home and auto. 
which is the natural thing to do. This year, I'm shifting my focus to what's important, family. Protecting your family with life insurance is the most important insurance decision you will ever make. I'd like the opportunity to sit down with you and your family to discuss your life insurance. Together, we can build a plan that fits your needs and your budget. After all, life insurance is more than a policy. It's a promise. A promise to take care of the ones you love, no matter what. Give me a call, 289-4862. Your pharmacist is more than someone who fills your prescriptions. Your pharmacist helps you understand what medications you're taking. Your pharmacist makes sure your insurance is filed correctly. And your pharmacist answers any other questions you may have regarding your medications. Hi, I'm Rob Pickle, registered pharmacist and owner of Pickle's Drugstore. It is my goal to give you the personal attention you need to improve your health and well-being. My staff and I are here to serve you. Pickle's Drugstore, your hometown pharmacy, on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Kosciuszko with the one-run lead to start the seventh inning, 6-5. to five, And it is Braxton Smith back out on the mound for the Whippets. And hey, the Whippets are going to have to earn it as they will have the top of the order coming to the plate. Jack Howell, Braden Maranto, and Doe uh, McGowan. Seventh innings for Whippets baseball brought to you by The Breakfast Show. Weekday mornings on Breezy 101. They got some goofy guy that does the uh, the morning show there, host of the breakfast show. If you can tolerate him, it's an uh, okay way to start your day, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, Whippets looking for three outs. They lead it by one, six to five. The left-hander, Jack Howell, in at the plate. He's one for th- four. No, excuse me, one for three. Here's the first pitch. Right down the middle for strike one. Was it two lefties and then McGowan will step in. So that's two lefties and then a righty. That was pitch number 97. Inside ball one. One ball, one strike to Jack Howell. So you have Maranto on deck. Here's the wind up and the pitch. Good looking curve. Back in there for a strike. One ball, two strikes to Jack Howell, the left, the center fielder. Excuse me, I think I've been, I've been calling him the left fielder. He's the center fielder. I have him right on my defensive chart. Up and out, ball two. Big lead for the softball team off to our right. Seven to nothing, top of the sixth inning there. Oh, it's a 2-2. Count to Jack Howell. He's taking a while, and now Howell will be granted time. Whippets trying to get this, take a one-to-nothing lead in this best-of-three opening round playoff series. A little bit inside. They say it hit him. Oh, no. I think he thought it was ball four. Okay, I th- um, I didn't think that it hit him, but he took off down to first base like he like he thought it was hit, but I guess he thought it was ball four. So that's gonna make gonna be full count now. So yeah, he just took off. I uh, I did. <laughs> you know, if that hit him, that caught a piece of his uh, belt or something. But anyway, he's back in, and Smith pitches and delivers one outside for ball four. And that's a leadoff walk. Tying run gets to first base. That's probably going to be all she wrote for Braxton Smith. And we're going to have a pitching change timeout. We will step aside for that pitching change timeout. And we'll tell you more about it after this. But the Amory Panthers have the tying run on first base as we take our break. Braxton Smith will get a round of applause from the Whippet fans. It looks like Aiden Howard's going to come in in relief and try to close this one out. We'll tell you after this. Frank Chevrolet GMC, making your driving dreams come true. Hi, my name is Miles from Frank Chevy GMC. Miles, what do we got going on this month? 
Papa, is it true we have unreal rates? Miles, unreal and unbelievable. 0% for 36, 2.9 for 72 on select models, and up to $10,000 off select models. Papa, we have the most cars we ever have in four years. That's right, Miles. We're making driving dreams come true right here on Highway 35 North in Kosciuszko. Shop us online at frankchevy.com or call 662-289-4611. Never been a better time than today. Papa, can I go fishing now? Frank Chevrolet GMC, Highway 35 North in Kosciuszko. Chevrolet, find new roads. Frank Chevrolet GMC, making your driving dreams come true. Boswell Media Sports. It is Aiden Howard on in relief for the Whippets to try to close out this ball game. The Whippets lead it 6-5. to five. There's a runner on first base. Braxton Smith uh, goes six innings, gives up six hits, uh, five runs. Here's the kicker if you're, if you're Braxton Smith. Here's the kicker. Just one earned run. Just one of those runs was earned. He struck out five and walked two. Now, the runner on first base is his responsibility, so you don't close the book on him just yet, but it'll be up to the Whippets. Aiden Howard to come in and try to uh, close it out. Aiden Howard leads the team in ERA, and uh, we'll give you his pitching stats on the season. Aiden Howard, 25 and a third innings pitched. They have him with one win, no losses. And he has given up 17 hits, 14 runs, just six earned runs. He struck out 24, walked 15. He is the team's leader in earned run average, just a 1.65 ERA. So it'll be on the shoulders of the sophomore. He's had a great game at the plate, hoping to have a good game on the mound and try to find a way to get three outs. No doubt right here, Maranto is thinking bunt. Trying to get that runner over to scoring position. So, uh, as far as defensive changes, they just swap. Howard goes to the mound. Braxton Smith goes to third. Ranto does try to lay down a bunt. It's a good bunt. Kewen gets it, throws in time for the out. And uh, Moranto does his job. It's the runner over to scoring position for out number one. Dow McGowan coming to the plate. Last time he was here, he hit a home run. He hit it over the 345 sign. So 2-3 put out, one out in the inning. And McGowan on to hit. Let's see if they try to bunt him. I don't know. He hit that home run last time. They might let him swing away. That pitch is up, ball one. So let's see. McGowan... uh, He's reached base twice, scored two runs. Had the home run, that was a solo shot. Swinging strike one. Had a solo shot. And then he reached on an error in the first and came around to score in the first. Other than that, he's got a ground out. He's the, the big Amory first baseman. Look back at second for Howard. Howell. Here's the pitch. Curve ball stays up. Ball two. Yeah, I think if you're Kosciuszko, you don't necessarily worry too much if you if McCowan gets on base here. Then you got you got the force and possibly double play, especially after what he did to the last ball that he hit. I mean, if you can get him out, you can get him out. She got him to chase a high fastball. Two two count. Aiden Howard, the sophomore, trying to close it out. We didn't get, a, didn't see the final pitch count for Braxton Smith. Trying to get that if we can find it. There's a little roller down the third base line. Smith gets it. He'll throw to first for the first out. Go back to third for Powers, and he's able to get over the third on the throw. But there are two outs now. Tying run, 90 feet away. Good defense by Smith to get that one and throw. So, 
Two outs, it's Jathan Ray on at the plate. He's one for three. And watch out if I'm holding McGee. He's grounded out to second twice. And he's got a single that went past him. So the lefty Ray versus the righty Howard. First pitch, strike one. You hear the Whippet fans here. They're trying to encourage the team, kind of get that, get that one final out. Trying to take this one to nothing lead in a best of three series. Eden Howard. Pitching from the stretch, never pitches from the windup. Yes, uh, pitch must have been maybe a little low outside, not, not quite sure. Either way, it was called a ball, just not in the strike zone. A 1-1, the count as Ray calls for time. Kosciuszko leads at six to five, bottom or top of the seventh inning, two outs. Here's the pitch. It's a curveball, swinging strike two. Amory down to their final strike. And Aiden Howard trying to give the Whippets a one run victory. You hear the Amory dugout off to our right. Here's the pitch. It's hit back up the middle. Tillman gets to it on a hop. Here's the throw in time for the out. And the Whippets will claim game one over Amory, six to five. Great defensive performance by the Whippets. And uh, they take the 1-0 lead here over Amory. And we'll try to close it out tomorrow on the road. Big win for the Whippets. We'll step aside for a break, an extended break. When we come back, we will have our Wendy's Post Game Show and our Autumn Ridge Dental Player of the Game and tell you who that is. But Whippets get the win 6-5 to five and move to 1-0 and oh over Amory. Here's something I bet you don't know. You could go to college for free. Do you have a 20 on your ACT? Yes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait. So my tuition... Is free? Where? Home CC. Yes, every word you just heard is absolutely true. Goodman, Kosciuszko, Grenada, Ridgeland, Yazoo City, online. Does not matter. Why in the world would Holmes Community College offer free tuition with a 20 on the ACT? Simple. At Holmes, we don't want you drowning in college debt the rest of your life. You know, I have heard students with associate degrees from Holmes often make more money than four-year students with bachelor and master degrees. True. Plus, at Holmes, you get three-day weekends. So there's that. Sweet. So now you know. Your tuition is free with a 20 on your ACT at Holmes CC. No place like Holmes. Holmes Community College. What moves you down the road and through the woods? Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales with utility trailers in all sizes and truck beds. Central Tire Sales can customize to your specifications. Central Tire Service puts your life in motion with tires engineered to last for your ATV and vehicle. A full service mechanic and tire shop. Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales across from Prairie Farms and Kosciuszko. Your pharmacist is more than someone who fills your prescriptions. Your pharmacist helps you understand what medications you're taking. Your pharmacist makes sure your insurance is filed correctly. And your pharmacist answers any other questions you may have regarding your medications. Hi, I'm Rob Pickle, registered pharmacist and owner of Pickle's Drugstore. It is my goal to give you the personal attention you need to improve your health and well-being. My staff and I are here to serve you. Pickle's Drugstore, your hometown pharmacy, on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko. Renaissance Insurance is your neighborhood insurance partner. Renaissance Insurance makes you feel at home with your home insurance. When you hit the road, Renaissance Insurance makes sure it's with the right auto coverage tailored for you. Renaissance Insurance takes the hassle out of sorting through business insurance. One stop, complete coverage. Call Robbie Robertson or Bradley Tyler at 662-289-4621. Renaissance Insurance, Court Square, Kosciuszko. Wendy's without the Wendy's app is like nugs without the sauce. <gasps> 
Or a Frosty without the fries. <gasps> or a hamburger without the fresh beef. No! Level up. Get the app to order ahead, order delivery, earn free food, and get app-exclusive offers. One app, all the Wendy's. Offer for a limited time at participating Wendy's. Terms apply. App registration required. Fresh beef available in contiguous U.S., Alaska, and Canada. Boswell Media Sports. This is the Wendy's Post Game Show, and uh, it is a win for the Kosciuszko Whip at 6-5 over Amory. Taking game one of this best of three series, and uh, they can close it out tomorrow on the road at Inawamba Community College and move into the second round of the playoffs. But uh, looking at the uh, uh, the box score for the Whippets, uh, Braxton Smith pitches a great game for Kosciuszko. After the first inning, it was uh, pretty much smooth sailing for the Whippets. They give up four runs in the top of the first inning, and... Uh, none of them were earned. The only earned run that Braxton Smith gave up was a home run in the fifth inning to Dow McGowan. Other than that, all those runs in the first inning came off of errors. So Braxton Smith, six innings pitched, gave up six hits, five runs, just the one earned run, five strikeouts and two walks. Aiden Howard, give him all the credit. He comes in and throws ten pitches and gets the whippets out of the inning. Pitches the final inning uh, and uh, gets – Three ground outs. We get a sack bunt uh, to send the runner to second base, and then you get two ground outs. Great defense by Braxton Smith at third base and Ryan Tillman up the middle at shortstop to get the out for the final inning of uh, play. Uh, offensively, you had a lot of guys uh, uh, do a, a lot. Let's see. You had Andrew Mansell singled and scored. You had Baird Kewen who uh, singled and scored. Benny Powell. Uh, got a couple of singles, scored a run. Uh, also, you're looking at Bailey Powers with uh, two singles, Aiden Howard with a pair of uh, three singles, and he had Holden McGee with two hits. So Whippets were able to get it done offensively. But taking a look at your Autumn Bridge Dental Player of the Game, it's no contest right here. It's Aiden Howard, the sophomore. He has, let's see, goes three for three, drives in two runs, and pitches the final inning of uh, baseball and gets the win or get, closes out the game for the Whippets. So, I mean, that might be one of the best Autumn Ridge Dental Player of the Game resumes that we've ever had here in this um, uh, since we've been doing uh, Autumn Ridge Dental Player of the Game. So, Aiden Howard, Autumn Ridge Dental Player of the Game. Now that's something to smile about. Whippets going to be on the road tomorrow. So that game, okay, scheduled to start at 2 o'clock tomorrow from the campus of Itawamba Community College. Now, there is some rain in the forecast up that way as I hear fireworks or something going off over to my right. I guess the Whippet softball team has uh, won their game, and they were they were up 7 to nothing. But, yeah, I, I, at least I hope that's fireworks and not something going massively wrong off to my right. Uh, but yeah, as far as tomorrow goes, we will have the game for you on Breezy 101. We know that for certain. So, Breezy 101, we'll have it for you now. Video stream. Just really not sure. Don't know what we're walking into at Inwamba. I've spoken with their uh, some of their sports personnel and say that the press box is not very big. Amory gets their, their spot in the press box. So for me, we might be top row of the bleachers. I don't know just yet. But no matter what, we will have audio for you on Breezy 101 and, uh, and BreezyNews.com and the Breezy 101 app. Some things just kind of out of our control. But we'll do what we can uh, tomorrow to get the game uh, on the video stream for you. But Whippets wrap it up 6-5 to five and take a one to nothing lead over Amory. If they win tomorrow, they're moving on to the second round of the postseason. If the Whippets lose tomorrow, uh, then we'll play game three back here at the home ballpark on Monday. Big thank you to Donald back at the studio keeping us on the air. Also got to say big thank you to Scott Hines, who was doing the Whippet softball game off to my right. That was on Cruising 98.3. Thank you to Billy Steen, who's producing the ball game. Uh, for softball. And so, yeah, thank you to BMO, Melissa, Laura, uh, uh, Lisa, Ashley, everyone involved in Boswell Media Sports, uh, whether it's making graphics, making commercials, uh, making ad sales, everything, entire group effort. So the Whippets get the win tonight, 6-5, to five, and can move on to the second round tomorrow. So for our entire crew, Breck Riley signing off, saying,